Nicole back. How you remind me on BBC Radio Kent. You're listening to Anna Louise. Time for some isolation inspiration. Things for you to make, bake and create. Festivals and events to go to from the comfort of your sofa. Local attractions opening up and inspiring guests. Now Richard Stevens and Hayley Elizabeth are from Black Manta Photography. Underwater photographers and videographers, vloggers and marine conservationists, travel writers <laughs> and a couple who dive together. Richard, Hayley Welcome to the show. Richard, where did your passion for the sea begin? Oh, Anna, hi. Uh, good day to you. Um, do, well, do you know what? I was I was actually born the month that the film Jaws came out, so I think it was kind of written in the stars. Uh, I've got a bit of a passion for sharks from it. and um, <laughs> That's you know, not the normal up. reaction to that film, Richard, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're very misunderstood, honestly. Uh, but, you know, when you, when you grow up, you know, you, you kind of live on nature programs and you know there's so many inspirational people out there obviously people like david attenborough and, and stuff so it was just kind of a i think we've both kind of always been you know water-based people so it's just it was just something that we really really wanted to get into uh, you know from a young age and uh, you know here we are now i bet when you met all your first dates were at the beach weren't they <laughs> i think one of our first dates was a diving holiday actually <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant how did you both turn your passions into a career and also make it work so that you can work together as a couple as well? Well, we, um, I think if you ask any of our non-diving friends, um, we can be a little bit overbearing and quite boring sometimes when it comes to talking about diving. And we, um, Whenever we posted anything about diving on, on our own social media, our, our diving friends would moan that it was all we ever talked about. So it kind of happened by accident, really. We we kind of started the page and um, it was just somewhere really for us to put all of our diving content going forward. So it, it didn't start as a, this is how we're going to uh, plan our future or uh, start a career or make money. So it all came about by accident. Um, fortunately for me, Haley's a very talented underwater photographer. Uh, so she carries me quite a lot of the time. I, I, I just do video, so I, I just point and shoot. But True. <laughs> <laughs> Hayley, Richard is also very talented. <laughs> oh, Hayley, where did your love of the sea begin? Um, I've always been a bit of a water baby. Like, my parents could never get me out of the sea. I grew up by the beach, and whilst it wasn't a very nice beach, um, I was always playing around on the sand and fascinated by kind of the animals that were in the water. And as, I grow- as I've grown up, that passion has just grown. Um, and like Richard said, I absolutely love David Attenborough. I could listen to him and watch him all day and I just wanted to get out there and experience it for myself so um and Richard was quite an inspiration as well he talked to me about diving every time we spoke um and so he encouraged me to kind of get the qualifications and get back into diving so wow and you're being the the main photographer Hayley it must be a lot to think about I mean there is with photography anyway but underwater you're swimming you're diving you've got all of the technicals to think about you're also shooting unpredictable sea creatures as well how difficult is it to get the perfect shot oh immensely difficult you can take thousands of shots and still not have the one that you set out to achieve um I'm quite lucky in that I'm inspired by my friends who dive um and kind of what they take and how they shoot. And I've been, I've been very lucky to be able to learn from some of the best um, underwater photographers in the business. But it is incredibly difficult. You, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how the animals are going to react. Um, so all you can do is prepare um, and have your camera ready at any second because it's that one moment when the whale shark comes past you that you need to be armed and ready to take that shot. When you say, you know, you go down there with the intentions to kind of get the shot that you want, how do you plan for that? Because I imagine you have to be incredibly spontaneous and kind of improvise with whatever creatures kind of come up to you on the day. Yeah, you do. Um, If you know the dive sites that you're going to, you get a lot of inspiration from kind of um, the dive guides and the photographs that already exist. And you might have in your mind the creature that you want to hopefully capture um, on film so that you can kind of show people what, what the underworld, underwater world is like. Um, so there might be an image that I've got in my head that I want to take, um, but I tell you nine times out of ten, the image that I come up with at the end of the dive is not the one that I set out to get. <laughs> so you do have to be pretty um, switched on and you also have to respect the animals. Um, it's not about the shot, it's about the experience. And if there's, there's any chance I can capture the experience that I have on camera, then then that's great. But if not, then 
you just go again on the next dive and hope for the best. <laughs> What's the most spellbinding sight or bounding sight rather that you've ever witnessed underwater? Oh God, that's so difficult to answer. We get asked so often, what's, the, what's your favourite place to dive? And it, it really depends what you're looking for. You know, whether you're looking for big sort of pelagic open water stuff like sharks or small, tiny macro critters or whether you want reps or whether you want, you know, scenery, reefs. Like we've, we've kind of got something beautiful all around the world, you know, which is our favourite. I, I, mm. I am a massive, massive shark fan, as I said. You know, we've even named one of our cats after a shark. <laughs> Um, and, and What's it called? Pretty much all, uh, Mako. Oh. <laughs> He's the best cat in the world. I thought sharks <laughs> sure might be. Uh, I thought Mike shark. I thought sharks were coming into it for you, Richard. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've, uh, we've we've been fortunate enough to, to dive with uh, a number of sharks um, around the world and seen some amazing wrecks. Uh, I think probably for me though, one of the, the my favourite experiences wasn't actually diving. We were, we, were, we, were, we were cage divers. We weren't scuba diving. We weren't open out free. But we, we did a trip to Guadalupe um, end of last year, which is about 220 kilometres off of the west coast of Mexico into the Pacific. It's a, it's a very small island uh, sort of in between Mexico and Hawaii. Uh, where you kind of you, you get the spawning uh, great white sharks. So they, they spend some of the time um, sort of around August to November around Guadalupe. So we, we did some case diving with, uh, with great whites, but you, you, you don't appreciate just how majestic this creature is until you see it. You know, you can see it on the TV and you can, you know, they always make it look ferocious and vicious and, and nasty. But when you see one up close for the first time underwater, you just don't appreciate how big a, you know, a 15 foot long shark is that's, oh. As it's, it's almost as deep as a car, and in, you know where you had the doors off it. You know the thing is, it's huge, but it just—it's just so graceful as it swims by you. It's just it's incredible. How do you stay safe in that situation, Richard? Because you know it is terrifying, and it is—it is dangerous. <laughs> so again, I was in a cage to start with, so uh, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're. But to me, I mean, like it's—it's it's, you're, you're. Do you know what? I sometimes think the cage is there for the shark safety than for ours. Sharks just don't go around aimlessly attacking people, you know. Despite what the media, uh, what, what the media say, but it's. Uh, I think if you ever get the chance to swim with a shark of any variety of any species, it's uh, it, it's such an incredible uh, privilege to experience. And you so, just have to respect the animals. You know, we're in their territory. It's it's their world, so you don't ever get too close. And you just try and watch them and behave, you know, their behaviours, and and try and. And get a sense of how they're, you know, reacting to you. I think is probably the key. So not always being aware of your surroundings and what the animals do. You must have to have incredible instincts, kind of ready to react in any moment. So when you say you you used to go down in the cage, Richard, does that mean you've left the cage behind you? Don't tell me you're now swim swimming freely with sharks. Uh, no, I haven't done with a great white, but you know we have done with many other varieties of like tigers, bulls, hammerheads, oceanic white tits, whale sharks. But uh, yeah, the sh- sharks aren't the mindless monsters that um, uh, it, it's all down to Jules, really. Jules has kind of given everyone this perceived image that yeah. if you get in the water, you're going to get eaten. You know, you you're really not. Yeah, there are some instances each year, but that's it's more through uh, accident or um, <laughs> mistaken identity. Yes. So it's not when you're in the cage. It's not like in the films when the cage sort of is crunched up by the shark. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, that's, that's really not going to happen. <laughs> Hayley, what's the most spellbounding sight you've ever seen underwater? Um, well, it was actually early on in my diving experience. We went to a place called Socorro, which is um, where you get a lot of um, pelagic animals and you get to see the oceanic mantas, which are sort of the size of like a double-decker bus. And on the occasion, you get to see the rare black mantas, which don't have any white markings on them. Um, and before we went on the trip, I was, hoping that we would get to see um one of those and when we did it was just one of those moments that i'll forever remember i'll forever remember um because you just you just feel so privileged to be able to see these animals um and it actually was why we called um our kind of our brand is called black man for photography because um we were so enamored by these animals and every time we see a manta i have that same um experience and i'm I love them so much, I even got a tattoo of one on my back, so <laughs> that's commitment. It's become an obsession for you. 
Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and I love as well that you talk not only about the animals, but the wrecks. I take it you see all sorts of shipwrecks underwater. It must oh, feel God. like a, a magical experience. It's, oh, oh, it's, just, it's incredible. You know, there's, there's some incredible wrecks off of the south coast of the UK, but there's, there's also some absolutely you know, it's stunning very famous uh, wrecks in, in the Red Sea, uh, in, uh, clearer waters, warmer waters, uh, so a bit more of a holiday destination. Now, there, there's wrecks obviously all around the world, you know, from uh, recent uh, recent wrecks from the 80s, you know, dated back hundreds of years. But I think one of the most special places we went was to um, a place called Truck Lagoon, which was the, it's, it's the, it's the sunken fleet of the Japanese Navy um, it, it, the Americans retaliated uh, against Japan after Pearl Harbor uh, and they attacked the Japanese naval fleet at, uh, that was that was moored up at Truck Lagoon. So there's a there's a lot of Second World War um, wrecks there, but they are. They're, 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 although they've been there 70 years, they're, they're very much untouched. It's only sort of through degradation of the sea that they've not been, really been pillaged or um, sacrificed in any way. So there's, you can see of you can see medical kits and glasses and bottles and. You know, there's lots of things that went down with it which is still there, unbroken, untouched. So there's even a light bulb still in its socket and the no. glass hasn't even broken, so you can still see the filament inside and see the writing on the on the bulb. So yeah, that's um you know, it's a tropical place, it's in um um it's in Micronesia. So it's 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 a long way to go. I think it was thirty eight hour journey for us to get there. And it's sort of in between Australia and Hawaii, so it's it's quite a way out but the wow. Is that it's something you both plan to go and see, or is that something that you stumble across as you're diving? Oh, uh, no, there's a lot of planning. Uh, like, I've got a trip later this year that I booked two and a half years ago. Um, you know, so, some of the more famous and uh, highly sought after places become booked really quickly, so you do really have to plan, you know, uh, maybe a year and a half, two years in advance. But, you know, you know when we're travelling as well, we, it's, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot in it. It's not just a holiday. It's then, you know, we're then writing articles and we're then producing videos and photos. So there's, there's quite a lot. I think last year we we did, what, 10, 12 weeks um, overseas. Wow. So we're really lucky in that perspective. You know, we're, we are very fortunate to get to see a lot, a lot of the world and, um, you know, experience not just the diving, but the cultures and different types of weathers and different types of diving and, so as a jet-setting couple, how have you been coping in lockdown? Have you been able to dive? Where are you right now? Uh, we're at home. Um, so we're based in Alpington. Um, we, we, we had a trip planned in April, which obviously got pulled. And then we should have been away in June, uh, which obviously got cancelled. So we'll, we'll hopefully just re, um, reschedule those ones. But uh, yeah, it's slowly drying out at the moment. <laughs> oh, I bet you're chomping at the bit, aren't you? Sorry? I bet you're chomping on the bit to get back out there, aren't you? Just a little bit, yeah. You, know, you look at pictures and, and videos every day and it's just like, oh. We, we were really lucky because we spent four weeks in Australia at the start of the year. So oh, wow. We got back like three weeks before lockdown um, started. So we were really fortunate to, to see some incredible things diving on the Barrier Reef and off the South Coast Adelaide. Some of some friends, you know, spent some time in Sydney, um, Cairns. So, yeah, we were really, really fortunate to get that in. Um, so we're still kind of living off that at the moment. So as lockdown lifts, what are on both of your bucket lists? What creatures do you still want to see and places you want to go? Um, well, top of my list would actually be back in Australia um, and to see the Minky Bones. We um, had someone who we met when we were um, diving the Great Barrier Reef and she's been posting her experience and it just looks absolutely incredible. Um, minky whales are, are very used to... Um, the human interaction and so they come very close and there's just a unique opportunity to see them out in the wild and and actually they are thriving where they are so that for me would be the the top of the list to do that richard is it a, a type of shark no doubt <laughs> that you're still uh, yet you know, to I, see i've never seen a humpback whale underwater so oh, wow. I'd, I'd really like to sort of there's places like dominica or um sort of in, uh, the fiji tonga area Vanuatu out that way so you know I'd, I'd really like to do a trip but that's kind of really more of a, a potentially a snorkeling trip because you're you, you can never predict where the whales are and it, it's sort of like they're going to stick around you know it might not be very fast but you never keep up with one if you're scuba diving so that's kind of more of a uh, in the water snorkel back in the boat find another one in the water 
back on the boat kind of thing. So, but yeah, I'd like to see some humpback whales. That that would be uh, immensely cool. The problem that we have is that we we travel to we try to travel to new places all the time, but then you when you go somewhere, you're then you fall in love with it and you want to go back yeah. and you want to take people back. You know, we've been we've been to Egypt countless times. There's, there's one place in Egypt that we really love. Um, it's a place called Roots Red Sea. Uh, I think we've been there 10 times between the two of us, you know, over the years. Uh, this place in the Philippines that, we, that we're that we going back to for the third time next year. So, I guess when you fall in love with the place, you want to keep seeing it, keep uncovering all the, the mysteries that are yet to be found. Yeah, that's it. And you make friends as well, that's the thing. It's also helpful from a photography perspective because if you know the dive site, then you can plan more ahead. And, and particularly when we go back to the same place, you can... You know, you can spend more time in one in one area and get that and get the shot that you want, and you're not kind of mm. um, only diving that site once. So we do like to go back to places where um, you have an amazing experiences and and just hopefully capture either the video or the photography so that you can share it with other people. Diving is often, um, you know, not everybody's cup of tea, so we just want to be able to share um, the wildlife and and the ecosystems under the water with other people, so that hopefully, you know. Um, more and more people want to preserve it and protect it. So, yeah, that's really difficult to do. <laughs> Richard Haley, before you go, what advice would you give to people who are desperate to make their passion into a career? Oh, you just got to, you know, first of all, enjoy it. You know, don't look at it as a career or a way to make money. You just got to have that passion and that drive. You, that's all you can really do. I mean, if, if, you, if people can see how passionate you are about something, it, it, they'll get interested in it and, you know, if you've got a hobby, if, view it as a hobby to start with, and that's essentially what we did. You know, it was just by accident that people started to follow us. I'm oh, sorry, not not by accident, but it was just for us posting things, and, and you know, I do a number of sort of different product reviews, which people find interesting. So, you know, our YouTube has been a, a great way to gain uh, our following. But yeah, just enjoy what you do, get out there and do it, and you know, just speak to the right people, speak to people that are doing the same thing. Join Facebook groups, networks, follow people on Instagram. You know, it's so it's it's so incredibly quick how social media can grow. You know, your your friend network in, in something that you follow. Thank you both so much for coming on the show. It's been so inspiring chatting to you both. Where can we find you? Your videos, your photos, your writing, and all of your life online. Oh well, that's that's great. I mean, it's been great to talk to you. Um, you can find. I mean, our website is uh, blackmountainphotography dot com. Uh, we've also got, um, we're quite prolific on YouTube, Instagram and, and Facebook, so you can find us at Black Mountain Photography on any of those. And uh, writing-wise, we've got uh, a number of printed articles. Uh, there's two publications that we uh, write for, um, Dive Travel uh, Adventures, which is part of the Scubaverse Media, and also Scuba Diver Magazine. Um, so if, yeah, if you go onto their websites and maybe um, look for us, you'll, you'll find some of our articles there. But, uh, yeah, drop us an email, drop us a message on any, any kind of social media and we'll happily send uh, anything that anyone's interested in or answer any questions or, or give any advice. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Hayley. Richard Stevens and Hayley Elizabeth are from Black Manta Photography here on BBC Radio Kent. You're listening to Anna Louise. Travis now.